Uh, like just like uh, uh, la, la. <laughs> <laughs> there's definitely some really weird things with psychedelics like i never tried dmt but it sounds really interesting mm. if you if you did anything and there was just like a giant that would <laughs> that's not a fun you'd be like i'm out of here i yeah. went down the weird rabbit hole on twitter where um i found myself looking at evidence that all mountains are actually just prehistoric giants Maybe about three years ago there was a guy that went crazy and that went all over the news and he, he was on lsd one thing i would say is like respecting all drugs is really important but also reinterpretation of drugs i think is also important like what the fuck is alcohol if you don't attribute like negative and bad things towards it other than alcohol because alcohol is literally poison but <laughs> when it comes to something like well alcohol is not it's not a plant it seems like you can utilize some of these things and you can enjoy them and you can reap the benefits although sometimes when you take like a psychedelic the trip that you go on um i know some people who are like just kind of torn apart by like what they saw or what they viewed or, or what they went through as much as i understand that i don't believe it i'm gonna be 30 in a few days um but i'm feeling better and i'm getting stronger and because of all the habits that we continue to implement and all the things that we're doing for ourselves on the show i know that my 30 is going to be better than my 20s you guys ever get frustrated with how a chick gives head and and think about how you could do such a better job if you were gay <laughs> I'd be competitive about how far down my throat I could get that dick. <laughs> competitive. Power Project Family, how's it going? Now, on this podcast, on almost every single episode, we talk about sleep because sleep is important for your workouts, for your recovery, for your nutrition, for your fat loss, for your muscle gain. Literally everything comes down to getting great sleep at night. That's why we've partnered with Eight Sleep Mattresses. Now they have something called the Pod Pro Cover. Now this cover is something you can put over one of Eight Sleep's mattresses or your existing mattress. And it temperature regulates through the night so that you get the best sleep possible at every phase of your sleep. You know, most people uh, think that you need to have your room temperature at 68 degrees Fahrenheit, but our temperature is different. I sleep hotter than most people. Uh, you might sleep cooler. So that's why the eight sleep mattress for yourself and your partner, either side of the mattress can have its own temperature regulation. And the cool thing is that the eight sleep app watches your temperature through multiple nights and it'll literally change the way the temperature is set based off of the way you sleep. It's crazy. It's literally the Tesla of beds. Andrew, tell them about it, dude. Yeah, dude, it, it's, this uh, technology is insane. It's like the most high technological, can't even say that word, uh, piece of equipment that I have in my whole house. Um, so you guys got to head over to 8sleep.com slash power project. That's eight spelled out. So E-I-G-H-T sleep.com slash power project. And you guys will receive $150 off of your pod pro cover or your pod pro cover and mattress combo. And I must say that that mattress is actually extremely comfortable. They didn't skimp out on anything on this uh, product. Again, eight sleep.com slash power project links to them down in the description, as well as the podcast show notes. I've never had a sour belt. Well, yeah, you have. I'm going to take okay. some of this real quick and I'm going to wash it down. Sour belt. Uh, you know, the camera's. I mean, we're recording, but the camera's not on you, so. Well, I'm literally eating, you know, some um, shiitake mushrooms. There you go. All right, now the camera's on. For health. Hashtag. Hashtag shiitake mushrooms. Hashtag eating anivar. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that, that is, is not, traps. Not what he's Look at doing. his neck. That's not neck what he's doing. Huge. His neck is huge. That's a lot of shiitake mushrooms. Is he normally that big? Oh my. This is kind of gross. The sour belt? Yeah. You didn't like it? No. <laughs> oh man. I mean, that was delicious. It's sugary, but you can't hide that flavor. I do not taste any of the shiitake mushroom flavor at all. Unless you cook it with, uh, cook it with some steak, maybe. Let's look up real quick. Um, 
Andrew. <laughs> I don't Can you cook down. up? Can you cook up some shrooms with steak? Like some sh- shiitake mushrooms? Yeah. Like the shiitake mushroom. Let me just give you guys a well, definition. Yeah, I know about that. So I can help you guys understand what shiitake mushrooms are, which these totally are. Shiitake. Um, <laughs> shiitake mushrooms are from Japan. They're oh. native to East Asia, which is now cultivated and consumed around the globe. It is considered a medicinal mushroom in some forms of traditional medicine. Mm. Normal. You can cook it with whatever. Non-drug. That's totally what we're eating right now. Yeah, the <clears throat> the the non-drug shiitake mushrooms that are pretty popular these days, they're dried out though, right? Like they're not like picked straight and then you can eat that. Doesn't it have to dry out? What do I know? <laughs> I don't know. Because what? I would imagine if it's still not dry, then you can probably cook it in mm. your steak. I don't know if you can cook the mushrooms you're talking about with yeah. steak. Um, because all the mushrooms that are non shiitake but also mm-hmm. kind of shiitake <laughs> um, are dry and yeah, there's also I mean. mushroom tea mm. right which yeah. is you know non shiitake mushroom tea mm. yeah. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> uh, if you guys are curious what we're talking about after this episode you we'll just go to our discord um, there's a company that sent us some non shiitake <laughs> mushrooms um people are like what the hell is he talking and about? and if you don't know what word i'm talking about then you just he haven't been listening if to this you, podcast if for a you long don't time. know you don't know you mm. don't know so head to the discord and you will understand what we are speaking about uh but yeah hey this podcast was, might get a little fun mm-hmm. hey now i was just talking about uh i'm starting every day and i have been for a while with uh, my own products i'm high in my own supply mm-hmm. when it comes to uh the keto pro and when it comes to steak shake and of course it's my own stuff so i'm going to talk about how amazing it is but it fucking tastes awesome and uh, i'm addicted mm-hmm. i'm hooked in i wish we uh, did we leave it it's in the office right now but yeah after the run i mixed two scoops of vanilla two scoops of chocolate the keto pro um you was, had like 700 grams of fat that's awesome mm-hmm. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh there's some um, uh, it's like almond milk in the fridge that was not oh. spoiled but i also had to throw away two things in our our fridge here because someone just keeps spoiled milk in there yeah, who knows um that shit was good. But if you guys don't have a Ninja blender, and if anybody knows somebody at Ninja, let us know. Because yeah. that grill, that mm. Ninja grill looks amazing. Mm. But they got a coffee maker. They got all kinds of stuff. They have a coffee maker? Yeah. yeah. Ninja's cornering the market on like things that make life easier. By the way, I've never seen both you guys so happy and excited about <clears throat> something until yesterday when I mentioned that new Coke mm-hmm. Zero that was out. <laughs> that white marshmallow one or whatever the fuck I it's was called. in the store. Door yesterday looking for Trying it, to but find they it. didn't have it. So see, here's a weird thing too. I was at like a weird like Circle K. Oh. You know how like sometimes those places have like the weird offbeat like candy. Yep. It's got the weird offbeat like drinks. Mm-hmm. That's uh, it was it was one of those spots. And the fucking <laughs> the guy at the register. Fuck it, I'm sending <clears throat> it. <laughs> the guy at the register couldn't have been any more oh worthless. It was unbelievable. Oh, I hate that. I was like. I said, can I have a bag? He goes like, yes. Fuck off, dude. <laughs> and I said, hey, because um, <laughs> Andy was uh, trying to put the top on to the, because it has like, um, it had like a Slurpee station, you know, and Andy got like a diet soda or whatever, and she got a bunch of ice in there. Her and I went on a walk and it was super hot out. <laughs> so she was all excited. She goes to push the lid down and it just goes, oh. <laughs> and it just like crunches on the side. Mm-hmm. And then she just kind of looks at me and I can tell she's getting frustrated and she tries to crinkle it down more. And then it, it works, but then she goes to pick up the cup and the cup sags in too <sighs> yep, much yep, yep, and the yep. top goes <laughs> right back up and off. And then she like, you know, tried to cram it down on there again and she got it perfect. And as the guy's like ringing it up, he touched it and the top came off again. <laughs> and she goes, hey, just so you know, those lids, they don't really fit very well. And he goes, yeah, we're just doing the best. <laughs> we're just doing the best we can with what we got. <laughs> and then we're leaving and I'm like, oh, that's no. not like, you don't do the best you can with what you got when you have a business. <laughs> like <laughs> you need to correct that. Like uh, fucking order new lids. Something. And then the guy, when, I, when he did uh, have a bag, he like throws it on the counter and I go, okay, I'm good. I guess I'll just bag these myself. And I just bagged it. Just looking at him. I'm like, you fucking wow. weirdo, mm-hmm. pale ass motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> it always bums me out when I'm not saying that, that was the case or this was the case with that guy. But when somebody is just like really unhappy with where they work, like that just bums me out when they give me like shitty service. But I just want to be like, just, just quit. Like you, you'll find another shitty job somewhere else. Like this just, is like, just don't take it out on me though. You know how it is. Sometimes you walk inside some of these stores. This is like walking in the fucking twilight zone. 
the uh, guy that co- the guy comes in, he's wearing socks and sandals, mm. and he was pulled in on like a motorcycle. He's got a motorcycle helmet on, and he walks in. He can't even see because he's got this fucking helmet on. Mm-hmm. He like knocks something over, <laughs> and then a girl comes out to help him that works there, and he's like, "Hey, girl." Oh. He's like, "What's going on?" And oh, she's like, no. "Huh?" And I was like, "Man, what the f- hell's going?" I'm like. So what the hell's weird. going on in here? Like this guy's being like weird with her, and yeah, what town was this? It's just in Davis. Oh, that's <laughs> it was just in it's Davis. Even worse. All hell's breaking loose everywhere. Yeah, it's always weird walking into a gas station like that where like the people kind of know each other. If you're like, uh, I don't know, like even going up to like Bodega I knew or something. I shouldn't have stopped there either. Yeah, because I know that place is fucked that way. I, <laughs> I used to live on that side of town, yeah. and I knew better. And because I had negative thoughts going in, <laughs> it happened. Negative shit went down. <laughs> you willed it into existence. I did. Yeah. Fuck. But you were saying, Andrew, people knew each other. What? No, just it's like weird. Like, um, I don't know. Like we've been like camping in like some out, out, you know, outskirts of whatever the fuck area NorCal we live in. Yeah. And then you walk into a, like a gas station or like a convenience store or whatever, and for lack of better terms, there's just like a lot of hillbillies around. But <laughs> mm-hmm. like. The store owner like knows who they are and like, oh, what's up? You know, so and so, da da da. I'm just like, they know I'm not from here. Like, they know my cell does not have any signal right now. Like, this could end weird. Like, like let's grab the Mexican and throw him in the back of our trunk. And I would be the only <laughs> Mexican in the whole fucking town. <laughs> so have you guys weird. seen the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Oh, yeah. Terrible. Yeah. Yeah. God, I, I just. I, I'm not sure. I've seen a, a more recent one. I don't know how This far one's like back. 60s. Yeah, no. I yeah. Seen that one. That one was, if you remember, yeah, that one was scary. subtly frightening. And mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. just, I just remember the part of the movie when the girl, like they, these people just stop at this random gas station. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, number one. I didn't realize how open people were potentially to hitchhikers in the 60s. Mm. That's one thing. It's like people were way more trusting of people where someone would just yeah, be like hitch this. hitch a ride with somebody. Mm-hmm. And they'd hitch a great. ride. <laughs> yeah, right? People really did that shit. And yeah, you, you go to some of these gas stations, no mm. cell service. You just, it's just you and whoever's there. It's just like, damn, shit. That's why people got away with so much murder. <laughs> It's like murder was so easy a few decades ago. Yeah. Now that shit's tough. Yeah, now well, they actually track you. They, I was yeah. Gonna, I was going to say, all you had to do was just lie, and they'd be like, well, we got nothing else against you. <laughs> you don't know how to prove where you were. Like, it was just, that's it. You that know? Sucks. It's kind of cool, though. I mean, I'm happy I'm alive at this. I'm definitely happy I'm alive at this point. Fuck. That, that shit would not have been good for me. But, um, Some scary ass shit going down back in the day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you should be happy too, Andrew. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, we made it. Oh, man. Anyway. What we got? You're talking about um, in Galani. Uh, uh, Alongalani. Galani. Uh, I, Alongalani. I even misspelled his name on one of the titles. I fucked up. All right. I love I got I got I got to roast our boy, Graham. Um, <laughs> all right. So, Again. Again. <laughs> all right. So I always give kudos to people who really try on names. But over the years, <laughs> I've learned that no matter what, you just, you know, it, I don't blame you if you don't know how to say my name correctly. I don't because the the language that my name is based off from, your language probably has not made any of those sounds, right? Mm-hmm. So when teachers would always say my name, I'd be like, Nsima Inyang. And then they'd say my first name wrong and they'd be like, did I say it right? I'm like, yeah. Because it's like- Close enough. Yeah. It's close enough, right? Graham is a guy who loves to try. He really does and it's great. <laughs> so he's <laughs> fucked up my name many times and I don't blame him for it. So I don't even care. But when he was when he was trying to say Allah's name, <laughs> okay, Allah is a law, a law, a law, a law, not a lane, not a lawn, a law. And but much, it looks like a lane. It looks like the a way lane. It's spelled out, right? A l a i n. But as much as this man tried, he would always revert back to a lane, <laughs> and then uh. he's like, "Did I say it right?" It's like, no. Allah, Allah, law, Allah, ah. Uh, uh, like just like uh, uh, lo, lo. <laughs> See, uh, it's the little shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Close enough. L O L or L U L or L U L. Lol or lol. Lol. Uh, lo. Lo. Yeah. Uh, lo. Uh, lo. There we go. Let's try the last name. Nglani. Nglani. Close enough. <laughs> or or Galani. Yeah. Nglani. Nglani. Mm, so no, he, he, when, when, when he says his name's Alongalani, so Nglani. But 
yeah, the man was trying a lot. <laughs> and he just wouldn't give up. And it was, it was fun to see. But uh, we were having dinner. <laughs> And we were talking about psychedelics, not like the stuff that we just took. We were literally just eating shiitake mushrooms, which you could buy from Costco in any store. That's what because we Because of the potassium. Because of the potassium. But at the dinner, we were talking about psychedelics. Um, we, Jim Galvin was there. It was Graham and Allah. And, you know, Jim was talking about how, like, you know, shrooms and psychedelics have helped people with trauma, it's helped people be introspective, et cetera. And Allah had a story about how in Hong Kong, there was a man who they said he took mushrooms, but what happened to this man is he apparently took a high dose of mushrooms. He brought a lady to his apartment, killed her, chopped her up because he was high. And then he did it the next day too. He brought another lady, Damn. killed her. <laughs> and then the police asked, why did you do this? Because they, they actually found the first dead lady and then they saw on the CCTV or the cameras that you brought somebody else here and it was in one lady that he cut up and put in a suitcase. I think that was really, it wasn't me. I was on mushrooms. Yeah. He, he, <laughs> he, yeah. He, he said it was, it was because too much. <laughs> maybe so, that was just, that was just his defense. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> but, but you know what? Um, I'll, I'll get to this in a second, but that Allah has never done. He's never done psychedelics. And he, and the cool thing about him is he's so chill. He's relaxed. He's, He's very introspective. He, we, we talked about his past and stuff. Like, it seems like he may have done something like that, but he's like, no, I never have. And that's the type of, I guess, insight that people are trying to get to personally uh, when they do stuff like mm. uh, the psychedelics we were talking about at that dinner. Um, so I just people, thought that was interesting. There are people that are able to view themselves, I think, uh, fairly realistically, you mm -hmm. know, inwardly and outwardly. And maybe he had some of those experience. I mean... <clears throat> shit through fighting you know like fight fight club is like i think it's one of the greatest movies of all time mm. fight club is amazing and life a lot of times is a fight and it's a fight against the man in the mirror you know it's a fight mm. against you think you have an opponent but it's really you fighting against like a lot of your own fears i mean obviously in mma and jujitsu and stuff you do have a literal opponent but it's you just getting over your own shit it's you just getting over your own fears and maybe somebody um you know, maybe somebody that has practiced that for such a long time, maybe they have a way to kind of look inward and then also a way to zoom out and to uh, uh, almost like get like a drone view of themselves. Whereas <clears throat> somebody that is stressed day in and day out, that kind of sweeps a lot of the day under the rug and forgets about their problems, has a couple drinks and then ends up on their phone late at night, uh, looking at what everybody else is doing in the world and comparing themselves to other people and letting the weight of the comments and the weight of stuff that's happening politically and socially, letting that kind of pull them around, getting kind of towed around by their emotions. Maybe for those people, it's harder to get that perspective. And maybe for someone like that, maybe uh, a practice of yoga or investigating maybe trying some psychedelics or some therapy of some sort might be a good idea absolutely no i i, I think it would be a great idea and that that's really tough thing when it comes to like sometimes we've talked about shrooms sometimes you've talked about weed and uh, some of these other things when many people do this stuff it's it's mainly to try to escape the daily life it's trying to it's it's not used as something to help you think more it's actually you mean especially alcohol it's something that you use to help you just try to take the edge off um, and life can be stressful and it's very hard sometimes to shift that perspective because you are so focused on all the things you got to deal with you got fucking bills some people got kids some people got rough relationships like there's a lot of shit that's just like it it, it, it makes things tough um, so I can totally I, I totally get it how it's just difficult to get out of your own skin even even when you do stuff like shrooms or whatever it's it's still kind of hard to get out of your skin or think mm -hmm. about things from a different perspective um but this stuff does i mean for me and personally shrooms did help with that we did help with that um but yeah i think a certain kind of person is going to be open to doing that and maybe because a certain kind of person is open to doing that maybe that allows things to creep in that um, allow them to also see themselves better. So somebody that's resistant, that doesn't want to take any of those things, even if they did have the experience, maybe they wouldn't get the same out of it. 
maybe they would take shrooms and be like, I didn't get anything from that. Mm -hmm. You know, just because they uh, maybe are, are a little resistant to it, maybe they didn't try enough, or maybe it's also just not for them. Um, but I think that there's there's definitely some really weird things with psychedelics. Like I never tried DMT, but it sounds really interesting. Um, it sounds wild. Yeah. I've had some for a while that I'm like, I don't know what the fuck to do with this because <laughs> you do. You can. I, I would love to take it, but I'm like at the same time, it like launches you into mm. another planet and you Just see like elves give and shit. It to me, that's what you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Andrew, how are the elves? <laughs> They're fucking awesome. They taught me how to podcast you better. There's no elves. There's giants. And you go fucking oh, jump no. out, of, no, I'm dog, the, jump I'm out of a window. <laughs> if there were giants, that's fucked up. Mm -hmm. If you if you did anything and there was just like a giant, that would, <laughs> that's not a fun You'd experience. be like, I'm out of here. I went yeah. down a weird rabbit hole on Twitter where um, I found myself looking at evidence that all mountains are actually just prehistoric giants. Mm. Yeah. What's the slight, so what? what's the micro, what's the theory? Um, I don't know the theory. I was just looking at hella pictures yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. and like people show like oh, satellite oh, oh, oh. images and they're just like faces yeah, in a yeah, lot yeah, of the yeah. mountains. Um, yeah, it looks like a chin and yep. a mouth and all that weird stuff. Yeah, yeah. I've seen that before. Yeah, and then like so earlier we were talking about like how Google Google exists. So with uh, Ngalani's uh, story about the Hong Kong man killing two people, I can't find it. You can't find it? So um, I don't know if it was just like old legend or like no. an old wives tale that people would say well there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of uh accounts like that but then you don't also know what else happened like when mm -hmm. i was uh in uh bodega bay for fourth of july maybe about three years ago there was a guy that went crazy and that went all over the news and he he was on lsd mm -hmm. um you know did he drink or do something different you know i don't know uh and then for some uh, some weird reason, he like he took some of the drug. He was acting weird. His friends recognized he was acting weird. He wanted to take more shit, and they let him for some reason, yeah. rather than like telling him not to do it. And then he did it. And even though he wasn't like a physical guy and like stature, he still like kind of beat some of them up and like threatened them and got strange and like kind of ran away and then he stole a car and he fucking like ran someone over it was crazy he really hurt people remember, yeah. he hurt himself i think he's uh paralyzed for life oh, i think God. and he used to be like a uh, some google mm -hmm. worker or something like that it was fucking weird but as as far as i know i don't i don't think there was other drugs involved in those cases so it's like man maybe it is a roll of dice sometimes and then they have said that if people have previous uh, mental health issues that's that's where you really got to watch out and imagine somebody blending that uh with like a pharmaceutical or or a recreational drug of whatever mm -hmm. you know we kind of just we don't really even think about that but what if somebody's on uh some previous medication and then they take that shit it's like who the fuck knows what happens then or familial mental health issues because like i mean again in my family somewhere there's a little bit of schizophrenia mm -hmm. and some of that can can come about by doing psychedelics and even to marijuana, your I've heard. Yeah, well, that I, yeah, yeah I, from I, I know people, uh, and that has been reported. Some people have said like, "Oh yeah, this person became like schizophrenic sparked after it, right? it. Yeah. sparked it." Now it wasn't it wasn't that marijuana causes that for people, but if you have an underlying thing and you don't know, and you do this shit too young, you could go off the deep end. Yeah. So that shit has to be respected, like. It, it, <laughs> In that situation, it makes you kind of wonder. When people look at that, people be like, see, drugs are bad, okay? Like, mm -hmm. that's what people look at, but then you don't get the further story where, like, he just took this shit real liberally. He's like, mm -hmm. he did some, he was already off his fucking rocker, and then he did some fucking more, Yeah. right? So it's like, mm, is that the drug's fault, or yeah. is that the irresponsible use? And I have a hard time believing that only LSD was at play, but... So that's what I was going to say, like, being somebody that seems like in the tech community probably yeah. had a, access to a lot of Adderall yeah, um, yeah, might have yeah. been doing mm -hmm. something else along right. with that but of course for headlines it looks really good to say like man loses his shit on LSD yeah. I just like the thing we saw with the uh, um, military people you know taking performance enhancing mm -hmm. drugs they want to pin a death to like steroids and it turns out the guy had pneumonia it doesn't mm -hmm. appear that there's any connection uh, at all to that but yeah, yeah they know. were the ones pinning not him <laughs> yeah right right <laughs> it is just so funny how pharmaceuticals in terms of those types of drugs they're just looked at as 
most, especially when it's talked about media commercials, et cetera, it's so beneficial for depression, so beneficial for this. And then when it comes to things like, you know, mushrooms, marijuana, all that type of stuff. Yeah. People can use it irresponsibly. They do. But like, it's, there's still this total demonization of that type mm. of stuff. You know, I would much rather do any of this stuff before I put my hands on any type of antidepressant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I think a lot of the information is changing and that's really cool. And you know, a lot of it is a lot of the information is probably changing because big pharma is getting ready to like start making some of their own stuff. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And so you're starting to see it like on NBC and CBS and the Today Show. And it's like, they're just so slowly trickling it out there and like, oh, wow, this has like benefits. <laughs> Who would have thought? It's helped people get over, you know, drinking and all mm -hmm. these kinds of things. And but I do think it's interesting too, how they, how it's all like kind of worded. And, and I do think, um, there's like informed ways of taking stuff. Uh, but I also don't think that you particularly need like a doctor there per se. Now, if you're somebody that has had um, previous issues with abusing drugs, then maybe you would want somebody there to kind of distribute it out to you. But I kind of think that people can take stuff if they are informed, if they read about it, if they listen to stuff about it. And they can kind of investigate and see if it's going to be something that works for them. But I guess, you know, going into a medical situation, you would also have the probably removal of the thing it is that you're trying to get rid of, like alcohol or something like that. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, it's tough to even talk about this stuff sometimes because I, you know, I always think about, okay, there are aspects of when I smoke weed sometimes. It feels good, right? But then, you know, I also know that this is not something I want to do every single day. Mm -hmm. This is not something I want to build a habit of. I mean, I know people who they do that. Then it's like, oh, fuck, I got to smoke every morning. Oh, fuck, I need to mm -hmm. smoke twice a day. Mm -hmm. It's like it, you want people to use these as tools and get a benefit from it and maybe change your perspective, think of things differently, and it benefits their personal self-improvement. But it's tough because when something feels so good, mm -hmm. like I love coffee, I'm addicted. You know, mm -hmm. I'm actually addicted to coffee, <laughs> right? And it, it's... So, so especially this stuff, it's like, how is the best way? Cause I, it's not like we're teachers in this shit. You know, we just talk mm -hmm. about kind of some of the stuff we do just to make sure that if people want to dip their toes into this. They know, use this stuff, have it benefit your life, but also be very aware, including creative. I fucking love this shit, mm -hmm. but be very aware how you're habitually using it mm -hmm. and don't let it turn into something where all the time that you feel bad, you then have to turn to psilocybin, weed, mm -hmm. kratom, anything like it's that. It's not a good idea if you're like, oh, I left the house without it today. Yeah. That, that <laughs> might not be great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, or it can be something that you just kind of accept, like a caffeine addiction or something like that. Mm -hmm. It just, um, <laughs> you just have to kind of weigh out the, the risk to reward. Like it doesn't appear that there's like some great uh, risk with caffeine having a couple cups of coffee, like just, I mean, I'm sure that we could, I'm sure we could dig up studies that show that it's negative. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but for as many negative ones that we could probably show a bunch that are positive mm. and stuff too. I, I've heard many people over the years say, you know, two to four cups of coffee a day sounds pretty reasonable. I don't know. Maybe that would negatively impact certain mm. people, but if your sleep is good, you track your sleep, you're a very healthy person. You have a lot of healthy practices. One thing I would say is like, Respecting all drugs is really important, but also reinterpretation of drugs, I think is also important. Like what the fuck is alcohol? Like alcohol, mm. we, I like alcohol. I drink here and there. Um, I enjoy, I enjoy, I enjoy where it takes me. I enjoy all that. But a lot of other drugs do similar things. They take you to spots that you otherwise can't get to. I'm not super talkative under normal circumstances. Maybe after a run, maybe I had some Kratom, maybe I just got done with a workout and I'm at the grocery store, I'd be more likely to strike up a conversation with somebody then. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I need a drug to carry me into that spot. Mm -hmm. And something like alcohol is, is great for that, for social settings. So if I'm going to hang out with my, my wife, not necessarily just her, but like if it's her and her friends or if it's some family, I'll have a drink or two. Because it just makes it easier for everybody to hang out with me. Otherwise, I'm just sitting there like a fucking stiff. <laughs> being like, oh, man, I wish I was working out right now. <laughs> Should I really be eating this? Should you really be eating that? You know, like I just am weird. So. Oh, look at the time. I got to get to bed because I got to wow, wake up and I got to go fucking myofascial release my calves <laughs> and my hips. 
<laughs> yeah. That's why I dig the, um, well, like breath work for sure, but like also like the post uh, workout high, right? Because mm -hmm. if, if you could get that post workout high in a shiitake mushroom, which I guess you kind of can, um, we would be taking it a lot more than it would be for like, uh, you know, just going into the gym and actually earning it. Mm -hmm. And so like, that's why I've been like a big proponent of like the breath work. Cause it takes me an hour to really get to like an awesome point. You know, like it, and it the takes cold time. Plunge. And then, so the cold plunge, again, also, it's like there's a barrier of entry, but once you do it, you feel amazing. And it doesn't take long in that cold. It literally takes two or three minutes. Yeah. You come out, you get cold, but then you feel fucking You good. do have mm -hmm. to make it past, you do have to make it past like a minute. You do have to make it past 90 seconds. Yeah. It does need to be in the two to three minute range. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, you got to... You got to hang in there for at least that. Mm -hmm. But then you get sent off into like a little warp zone and you're like, I made it. Yeah. And you feel incredible. Uh -huh. But if you get out before then, you're going to feel like a chump. <laughs> yes, you will feel demoralized. Yeah, yeah. You won't feel the benefits, I don't think. Mm -hmm. I mean, not to say that you won't get the benefits, but you won't feel them the same way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but so that's what I mean. Like they're almost like self-regulating, right? Like you can't, I guess you could overdo it, but like, you know, in order to get like that feeling that we love, like we can't do too much of that. Whereas if we, drink too much, obviously it's going to just lead down to a bad, bad road. Power Project family, how's it going? So no matter what diet you're on or no matter what supplements you take, it's necessary as you get older to know what's going on under the hood. That's why I've partnered with Merrick Health. They're the premium telehealth clinic owned by Derek from More Plates, More Dates. And we have a panel that will allow you to get all of your labs done and checked in a super easy fashion. Andrew, how can they get it? Yeah, you guys got to head over to MerrickHealth.com slash Power Project. That's M A. R-E-K, health.com slash power project. And at checkout, enter promo code power project to save $101 off of this comprehensive panel. Links to them down in the description, as well as the podcast show notes. You know, the, the, the interpretation of these things is something that's super interesting because we know that, and we talked about this extensively, but we know that if you think that a certain food is going to do some really bad shit and you mm. really believe that as you're, it, it can have different effects on you because of your actual belief of what that does. Mm -hmm. I know like there, there are some celebrities, even Rogan, like he smokes copious amounts of weed, mm. right? Um, he's extremely successful and he doesn't view weed in like of any type of bad way. So potentially with some of this shit, it's like if you don't attribute like negative and bad mm -hmm. things towards it other than alcohol because alcohol is literally poison but <laughs> when it comes to something like well alcohol is not it's not a plant you know it's, <laughs> it is there are things that you have to do that you do need to realize with things like alcohol like alcohol has been around for a really fucking long time yeah and it's something that's helped us survive we used to not be able to drink the water mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. people would drink coffee and they or tea i even think they, you had to have some sort of fucking boiled water or like... Yeah, coffee came after. Yeah, yeah, right. You yeah, need, yeah you, so you needed like something fucking filtered because you couldn't even drink our water. So you had to go around drunk all the time. <laughs> yeah. But also like when there ain't <laughs> shit to do, could you imagine? Like it, imagine if it was like 300 years ago <laughs> and all of us just had like a little, a little thing of uh, whiskey with us. We would like, we would covet it, right? Like uh -huh. it would be... You know, and we'd be like, Andrew, fucking don't, don't drink that shit yet. Like, wait till we're done with the hunt, you know? And then you'd be like, well, why'd you take some, you know? Because <laughs> well, it helps steady my hand. Yeah, my, my yeah, shot. yeah, yeah. We'd be like, are you, I mean, <laughs> fuck, man. It's like, you really, you really needed it. But alcohol is a poison. It's not a plant. Yeah. And <sighs> if you start to think about like, um, but it's got hops. Ibogaine <laughs> comes from a tree bark, right? Like a lot of these things, they, they come from natural sources that are already here. LSD is, I believe, artificially made. Uh, so, you know what I mean? Like you, the more artificial something is, the more I think you should be like, I don't know how much of that I want to get into. Absolutely. The alcohol thing is funny. There's something that I've never tried and I have to, it's, it's this, it's called palm wine. Have you ever, do you know what palm wine is or have you ever had a chance to try it? I've never had it. Extremely popular in Nigeria. They pretty much per ferment the juices from like some coconuts on the palm trees and mm. shit. And it, palm wine has been drunk in Africa for, or especially specifically in Nigeria for hundreds of years. Mm. It's like people love that shit. Just have a little extra something in there. Yeah, it's it's alcohol. It's mm -hmm. like, but but it's from a palm tree and they mm. ferment it and they make it like that. But it's like this shit has, yeah, it's been around for a long time, but, <laughs> but yeah. it's like, I think about I think about it like this. Like, um, I could I could smoke a lot of weed, and probably I'm, I'm be fine the next day. 
I cannot drink a lot of alcohol. Mm. The next the next few days, I will mm. feel like shit. And that's not just because my perception of alcohol is that it's poison. Like, mm-hmm. I, and don't get me wrong, guys. I do drink every now and then. But it's also because literally, mm-hmm. it's like the the fun, the things that it's doing to me is going to cause that despite me thinking right. alcohol is great or not. I'm going to have a hangover. I'm going to feel like shit. Like that mm-hmm. just... But it's different with other stuff. It's different with yeah. plants. Well, and I think if you like alcohol enough, and I think if you respect it enough, I think that you could probably figure out a way to get the buzz and to creep around with that a little bit, just mm-hmm. like people do with Coors Light and stuff like that, the lighter beers. Like <laughs> you just get enough of like the alcohol, you get enough of that kind of hit, and then you can still kind of do a lot of your normal shit. I mean, Did I Casey know. roast you too? <laughs> Is <laughs> yeah. that why you're saying? Oh, that? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he was telling us how, how to how to do it. But even like even like a glass of wine, and then you're you're drinking water in between. I mean, it, it's rare for people to respect it that much to do all the other stuff in between. Mm-hmm. Um, but let's just face it, a buzz feels really good. I think all three of us will mm-hmm. admit, buzz That's feels a, yeah. buzz feels fucking great. It's like, how do you kind of like ride that out? It's hard to kind of like have it last uh, any significant amount of time. If it starts to last a significant amount of time, it means that you probably drank too much and you're on your way to getting drunk. Mm -hmm. And then getting drunk, at least for us rookies over here, it takes a lot of recovery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to, we don't want to waste the time uh, with some of that. But my point is like, you know, I think it's important, like, not to stigmatize, uh, like, mushrooms and some of these other things that that people are doing. Just view them as being all very similar. They all have a risk. They all have a reward. Um, and and why not? Like, if you if you drink, if if you drink every weekend, mm-hmm. why not why why not view people that smoke, uh, uh, people that um, uh, people that smoke weed and people that do mushrooms and stuff, why not view them being like similar to you? And, and I don't think that people do. I think oh, a lot mm-hmm. of times, uh, I, th- I think sometimes people look down on people because they're like, those people do drugs. Mm-hmm. That guy's a pothead, <clears throat> you know? And, and it's like, you're, you're doing some, of the, I know that the, the reaction is different. I know that the drug, the drug is different. But you're doing the same thing. Yeah. Like that person's looking for an escape or a release. And I know we can view the plants as like not maybe the same escape as like alcohol. Um, I think alcohol kind of puts everything like on pause. And I think that something like mushrooms makes you kind of go inward. And not everybody wants to fuck with that work. Mm -hmm. And and that's why it's not as maybe not as not used uh, recreationally as much because it's like. It ain't always fun. Yeah. You don't always have control over like what ride you're going on when you take mushrooms. <laughs> yeah. But you know, the, the, the funny thing is on the other side of it, I don't blame people that look at people who's like have a uh, knee jerk reaction to when somebody does talk about marijuana, because uh, I know, I know a lot of people who do use marijuana as an escape on a daily basis and it's turned into that. And it's, it's unfortunate. too much. Yeah, they're they're an addict basically exactly. of, of marijuana. Yeah, and it's very unfortunate because you do see how it does slow down certain aspects of what they're trying to do, um, and how it's like they they can't function well mm. without it. So I can totally understand how people look at marijuana and it's like oh it's bad because again most that use it don't respect it, and that's like anybody who's listening. We're just trying to say please respect this shit. You know, if you're listening to us, at least you know that you got to respect it. And if right. you, you know if you're not, too. Like, right. you know who you are, <laughs> right? So, that's tough. Yeah, and then people, I mean, people do, they uh, take way too many mushrooms. They take way too many, like, you can go off the deep end on any of them. Yes. You know, it seems like, it seems like you can utilize some of these things and you can enjoy them and you can reap the benefits. Although sometimes when you take like a psychedelic, the trip that you go on, um, I know some people who are like just kind of torn apart by like what they saw or what they viewed or, or what they went through mm. during a trip. And it's hard for other people to like understand. I don't, like, I don't get it. I don't understand what people are talking about, but it, it's almost like just going to therapy, but it's like you working with yourself. Uh, I've said this before. It's like holding up a mirror in front of you, you know, whereas alcohol is like, it's entertaining for the moment. It's, um, 
you know, again, it, it's going to give you beer muscles. Maybe you'll <laughs> talk to that girl or maybe you're, maybe you'll dance or have conversation more so than normal. But mushrooms like whoop, like put a big <laughs> fucking mirror up in front of you and you're like thinking that uh, everything is everybody else's fault and I don't know, all the normal bullshit fucking thoughts that you have. Mushrooms like hi holding up a giant, like it's, it's fucking attached to your body, this mirror. Mm -hmm. And you're like, this is the fucking person I need to deal with every day. Mm -hmm. I need to get past this and over this. I'm truly curious though about the strength benefits of crack because people <clears throat> always talk about how crackheads have some, like just have enormous strength. And this isn't mm -hmm. just like one report. People are always like, crackheads are fucking strong. Like you need multiple people to detain them. Like they have that crack strength. So I'm just really wondering. LT, like, <laughs> Florence Taylor. He, I mean, he supposedly played a lot of his career on crack? smoking crack. And if oh, you're like, shit. he was unblockable. <laughs> He was yeah. unblockable. <laughs> There's a play I'll never forget against the Jets where three different people tried to block him and they just didn't stand a chance. And then he just fucking smashes the quarterback. And I was just like, oh my God. I have no idea if he was like high during mm -hmm. that moment or whatever. But like, dude, that that is like the most insane football player maybe ever. He was, Lawrence Taylor. He was mm -hmm. fucking awesome. Sugar Ray Leonard, um, he boxed for a really long time, um, I believe, on cocaine. Yeah, I don't, I don't even really know what crack is. His <laughs> LT. I don't know why that first still don't just made me smoke laugh. Crack. Oh god. He changed football forever. He changed. Really? He changed the way the, that that uh, offensives lined up. Yeah. Because he was so fast coming off that edge, uh, no one could, no one could fucking slow him down. How big was he? Did he ever win a Super Bowl? Yeah, he won a Super Bowl. Yeah, he was six, probably six, three or four, Oof. making Barry Sanders fumble. Not a bad. Jeez. Yeah, he was six, three or six, four, <laughs> and he was just so fast. Um, they talked about like, damn. You know, the coach would talk about these assignments the defensive players had, and he was like, I don't know anything about assignments. I'm fucking going for the quarterback. Look at it. Jesus Christ. He's intercepted the ball, just ran 100 yards like it's nothing. Mm -hmm. Ooh. He's running like he's on crack. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah you know what that is really interesting like what's the uh <laughs> did, did, did they test for for that and you know PEDs probably back not then? So, probably not Pro so many people probably did coke and went to go play yeah. games yeah like the, that was definitely a thing the entire new york mets when daryl strawberry was there really um, dude they partied every game God. Yeah, in between in innings, they would just like pull chicks from the uh, stands, take them in the locker room. Be like, dude, Daryl, we got to go. Oh, fuck. Okay. They just go smash in the locker yeah. room and come out and play. Yeah. It was a fucking party every game. Dude. Dude, people just be living. Like, I don't know. If you really just think about what life is like. <laughs> like <laughs> just think about like what life is oh, like. Oh, my shit. You know? I got to rewind that. Yeah, one. that was sick. Oh, my God. I wouldn't let people watch that one. He too. just jumped over the fucking running back. Oh, I missed it. The running back's like, this is going to be great. I'm just going to chop block him at the legs. I'll cut him down. It won't be any big deal. Uh huh. And it's Ye like, whoa. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> man, I'm happy my mom never let me play football. It's too much of a man sport for me. That no, shit. Those, those, those hits. Um, Jeremy Avila might be able to <laughs> tell us a little bit more about, <laughs> about some of this stuff, you know? I am curious. Yeah, he, he knows. Yeah, Jeremy was like <clears throat> on drugs one day and deadlifting over 800 pounds, you know, years later, I guess. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I wonder, yeah, like does it oh, – and probably okay. makes you feel invincible. Yeah. I've heard that about crystal meth and stuff too. Like, I think mm -hmm. uh, crystal meth supposedly does weird stuff like where if you see your own reflection – like you go, you go towards it. So it's very common for people on crystal meth to like break windows. Um, there's somebody that like, I think they supposedly bled to death because they kept trying to uh, dig themselves into like a shower, like a uh, drain or something. Oh weird. my gosh. That's like terrifying. their hand, their hands. Fucking, yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. how much strength and how like strong and how uh, many neural pathways do you have to override to like not feel that pain of your hands getting yeah. fucked up? I don't even mm -hmm. know if that's true. Is, but it's just I like, think that's the one like where they think like bugs are under their skin and like that's why you'll see like holes in their face because mm -hmm. they're like, I gotta get this bug out and just <laughs> fucking tear yeah. their skin off. Oh, I can't look at this anymore now. Stuff. Yeah, that shit's God, wild. It's just, it's just, oh, because you're looking at, look at the this. shiitake mushroom? Yeah, this one's exotic shiitake. But how about this aging backwards stuff? Mm. I think it's uh 
we bring it up a lot because Allah's an amazing person, but he he struck a lot of uh he just made us think of a lot of things from the conversation. Now there's a parabyte that's out on the YouTube channel. Um, I think it's titled This Will Help You Age Backwards. Mm. There are a lot of people in the comments in that reverse. were really in reverse, age in reverse. There are a lot of people in the comments that were really pissed. And they're like, this is clickbait. Mm -hmm. You can't age in reverse. I mean, I get that this is good stuff, but they, oh, let's not call it aging in reverse. Mm -hmm. But I think, like, I truly think you can age in reverse. Mm -hmm. Because with a lot of stuff that we talk about, imagine if you're 30 years old and you haven't been exercising, you haven't been having good habits for your health, and you're aging the way that most Americans age. And then you start exercising a little mm -hmm. bit. You start getting to sleep on time. You build some strength. You build some cardio. Um, you start eating better. Jeff Bezos years ago, he didn't look so good. I mean, not like he, you know, is like looks amazing now or whatever, but like he's in in good shape now. And he was like maybe, fuck, I think maybe 15, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. oh, he yeah. was like pudgy and just he, he looked very unhealthy. But don't mark, he has billions of dollars. Yeah, of right. course he can do that. Right, right, right. You know, but but that, but the, the thing is, is though, like, it's funny you mentioned Jeff Bezos, but he he also got jacked. People are gonna say mm -hmm. he's on drugs or whatever, but I mean, I, I'd like to think. Even while he was yeah. already really wealthy, his wife pointed out to him, she's like, I guess he would eat like dinner rolls every morning or something weird. <laughs> like, what the fuck? I don't even. Maybe he was just benching. That sounds incredible. I know. Yeah, ben, <laughs> yeah, some bench rolls in the morning. <laughs> dinner rolls for breakfast. <laughs> you know those Pillsbury ones that you like you put in the um, oven, like yes, I know them. Make the whole house smell amazing. Yes, yeah. I know them. Yeah. He like eat them every day, and then he like oh. went to his wife. He's like, I think I'm getting fat. She's like, Yeah, because you eat those fucking things. He's like, Why didn't you tell me before? <laughs> yeah. She's like, I thought you knew. It's like, because you're rich <laughs> as fuck. <laughs> you brought up Segura though. Yeah, Tom Segura. Mm. Yeah, he's he's gotten in great shape too. He's uh, down to 213 pounds, and years ago. He was chubbing out a little bit more. I think he looked older. You look at his early specials, yeah. man. Andrew, can you pull up yeah, any yeah, video yeah. from like his, look at his like specials in 2013 or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay. He didn't look as yeah, good. Eight and, or nine years ago, right? Yeah. He looked older than he does now. Like he really looks younger now, mm -hmm. you know, and he probably feels better too is my assumption. I don't know, but he probably yeah, feels better he too. He said he's feeling awesome and he, he's motivated and he's excited and he's also, um, you know, he's sharing with me that he's not like overly hungry either. It's like, that's always a good sign. You know, when people are able to lose weight and manage their weight and they, um, they're they reporting back to you that they're not like super hungry and that the diet doesn't really feel hard, mm -hmm. that's exactly where you want people to be. Because it shouldn't be hard. It should be something that is uh, fairly easy to maintain. Yeah. And the funny thing is... Pay attention to some the, the way that some of your friends may talk about aging because I have this really good friend of mine mm. and he just sent me a video of like uh, this 30 year old or something woman and she went backwards and she hit her knee, right? And some part of it, the, the guy's commentary in the video is like, you know, when you get in your 30s, things start breaking down, blah, 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 right? As much as I understand that, I don't believe it. I'm going to be 30 in a few days, um, but I'm feeling better and I'm getting stronger because of all the habits that we continue mm -hmm. to implement and all the things that we're doing for ourselves on the show. I know that my 30s is going to be better than my 20s and I'm going to be more vital. I truly believe I'll be more vital in my 30s and 20s because I'm just going to continue trying to get better with those habits. And if you implement those habits, you sleep, you get some form of exercise, you move more, you, you're not sedentary, you change maybe your resting positions, these little things mm -hmm. over time, you can, you can age backwards. <laughs> Set some goals for yourself. Maybe they're just small. Maybe you haven't even recognized that a lot of times when you go to get up out of a chair that you grunt and make weird noises or you use your hands to push off your own thighs or when you go mm -hmm. to sit down you reach your hand back those are really normal things when you're training hard and when you're you know you did, did legs day and your your legs are exhausted or your back is really tight from doing a lot of deadlifts and you have to kind of support yourself sometimes just to get down on a seat or down to the toilet or whatever it might be um but under normal circumstances, you shouldn't have to do that, mm -hmm. especially when you're 30, especially when you're 40, especially when you're 50. Yeah. Now, if you're, you know, 85 or 90, maybe like maybe shit does start to get a little hard. I don't know what it's like to be those ages. Um, so I guess I won't comment until I get there. But but you believe that you'll be good. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you're going to be good. Yeah. In the meantime, why not, you know, continue if you're the right strength to weight ratio 
then you should never have to worry about it ever. Yeah. If you're, you know, so I don't know about for Encima, but like, I don't plan to be this heavy my whole life. Same. You know, at some point I'll continue to come downward. I'll be 220 and 210 and probably at some point I'll be like 200 Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> so pull back I'll be 199.215. <laughs> that's the one. All right, 215. Yeah. Don't pull my man card. Just <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, y'all remember that? I wish we could pull up. I know we won't find it. That video of like that fucking 80 year old African man. Mm. Who was like still? He had a six pack. Oh and he, yeah, yeah. And he was like yeah, on Instagram or whatever. Yeah, yeah, he was lean. He had a six pack, and he was talking about yeah. I just never oh, stopped doing work. Mm -hmm. Like I wake up, I it do stuff great. every day. The thing is, is like you'll really start to get old when you stop using your body. Like all the things we learned about, you know, jumping and all these different mm -hmm. abilities, sprinting. You lose it when you stop. When you don't use it anymore. So you can just figure out a way to make these capacities a part of your life. You don't have to lose it. You don't have to lose your vitality. Chris Kodowski said, there's no old people, just old fascia. Now, mm -hmm. you know, you can go as sciencey as you want with that, but you can kind of just think what, what would make somebody uh, other than their age, like what would make somebody look, what would make somebody feel old? Forget about the looks part of it. Mm -hmm. What would make someone feel old? To me, it's like, from what I'm observing from a lot of people, and this isn't for everybody because there's some people for some reason it doesn't matter. They don't have to live under these same conditions, but yeah. everybody, everyone's a little different. But like, from what I've noticed for most people, if they had some sort of practice of like a sport or they did some stuff when they were young that had them continually demonstrating certain attributes, certain things physically... And they didn't have a large gap between that and what they did as an adult. Because I think a lot of times people, they stop learning when they get out of high school. For other people, they stop learning when they get out of college. The movement, why do people gain weight, you know, when they go to college? There's mm -hmm. like the freshman 15 or freshman 20 or whatever the hell happens, right? Why do people gain weight when they go to college? Because they used to play a sport. They're not quite good enough to play in college anymore or their luck ran out. They got hurt or something like that. They gain weight in college. Now they're even more distant from movement. Now you're 30, 40, and so on. And there's more, there's more responsibility because uh, maybe you got married, maybe you have a child. And so you could say that there's more stress. But if you have, again, if I'll use the strength to weight ratio, if you have a, per, if you have a, uh, if you have a strong, um, I'm trying to find the words for it, but if you, if you're able to mitigate the stress of life, the so stress like some tools to mitigate that stress, some tools to mitigate that stress, some tools to mitigate stuff that's coming your way, it will just won't feel that hard. Like in Seam and I were on a run today, and <laughs> some dude at the end, like Stuart, he 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 said he ran twenty seven minutes. My best ever that I ran uh, at the Arboretum in Davis is uh, 29, but he did 27 minutes and he was like, yo, what's up? Yeah, he was uh, chilling at the end of he that. He was fucking chilling yeah. at the end. Well, why is that? Well, because for him, it just wasn't that stressful. Um, and Seema and I would need fucking CPR if we tried to run as fast as that guy was running. You wouldn't need CPR. I'd need CPR. <laughs> Today we went on a run and I had to stop three or four times. But I was, it was fun. It it's was your really first fun. day, day, yeah. day one of that uh, Arboretum trail over yeah. there. But it goes to show you, though, like you can build tolerance towards stuff. And so just even watch the way that people talk. Hey, man, how's it going? Oh, man, just, you know, another Monday. Like, <laughs> you know, um, nah, kids are starting school. Back the fuck up, dude. The, your kids are starting school, not you. Yeah. <laughs> You're not starting school. You're fine. If you were starting school, I would let you get away with it. <laughs> if you're like, man, they're making me go back to school. I'd be like, fuck, dude. dude. We're all screwed. That is that is kind of stressful. I feel bad because uh, so Jasmine has like a couple after school things to do now. So like today, she's not going to get out of school till like 4 or 530. Hey. You know, starting at like damn near 8. And I was just like, oh my God. And I'm like, I felt bad because I had the thought. I was like, thank God that's not me. Oh, yeah. I would be fucked. Like, yeah. There's no she's, fucking way. Yeah, yeah. She's screwed, but you're still okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, well, all I got to do is drop her off and pick her up. We're you good. already, you already went through all that, you know? Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, it's our mindset, the way that we talk about stuff and, you know, uh, just developing a habit, developing a habit to some fitness, it, it does cost you a lot. It's not easy. Mm-hmm. But starting on a walk and starting on a run and starting to lift some weights and starting jujitsu and starting some of these things, if you have them 10 years from now, that is the ultimate fucking anti-aging thing you'll ever find is the ability to be someone like a Jason Kalipa who Jason Kalipa can do hit training. He can do, he can go run five miles. He's at Masters Worlds right now doing so jujitsu. Yeah. Having that skill set and his children are learning the same skill set. Like go on his page, go on mm-hmm. Jason Kalipa's page and watch his daughter's like running with him. His son's doing squats with him. It's really cool when you have a, an ability to go in the gym and power lift, to go in the gym and Olympic lift, to go in the gym and do sprints on a bike, to go outside and go on a hike. When you ha- start to develop this capacity and it's really broad spectrum, well, now you can go on anything with anybody. Somebody says, hey, you want to go on a bike ride? And you'd be like, yep. You want to go on a hike? You'd be like, yep. Mm-hmm. You can go and do anything. And you don't have to spend all this time in the gym. And you don't have to spend all this time and money on anti-aging, whatever the fuck bullshit thing. You can just simply work on being physical and developing more skills with that. And you oh, think Dre, is- you think Dre's ever gonna look old? Dude. Oh, <laughs> no. skills? You know what's so funny, man? Okay. You know what I think too? I think there's uh and some people are gonna think you're, you're bullshitting Sima. People have to say black don't crack right? And people have said that for so long that like, I think I also believe it, right? Like I'm not going to get old. Right. But I think that, I think that white people can age better if they believe they could age better. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think, no, I think aspects of that is because everyone like, can age better. Yeah. Everyone can age better. Everyone has and ability. I, I, that was, that was a little joke. But at the end of the day, like some people think that just like white people don't age well because they're white or whatever. But I, I you know, if you know, white people don't do a very good job. We're like, Man, black people got their awesome genetics, so <laughs> we're just going to be over here fucking being an accountant or some shit. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, no, but uh, no, I, I, I think, can see that changing, though, just with like social media and people like literally care, starting to care more about skin. Like, yes. Like, I could legit see like moisturizers and shit becoming more popular for dudes because like you've been pushing that on us for a long time. I still don't do it, but fuck, dude, maybe that's, well, and that's something I you're should like, do your physical look is one thing, but like if you don't feel old, you won't look old. Yes. Yes. And and maybe you'll look a little older at certain points in your life. Um, But like for me, like what if I, what if I stay the same for the next 10 years? You know what I mean? That that's kind of stuff that I Mm -hmm. look at. Like I'm not really concerned with a couple things uh, looking a little, you know, a little different than when I was 25. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, people have said that to me about like bigger, stronger, faster. Like when, the movie got like popular like several years after it was out. They're like, man, you look a lot older. And I was like, it's 15 years later. Like, yeah. I don't think you realize how long ago that was filmed, you know? And then like, I don't know, there's a, a lot of factors mm-hmm. in there, but. I've seen a lot of people say you're looking younger though. Right, at yeah, least people yeah. that watch the show, right, right. when they look at you versus like when you were heavier mm-hmm. and a few years ago, people have been saying you look younger and you do. Yeah, and I feel younger. I feel yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I think like for, for myself, you know, days where I, I am experiencing shit in my, like, you know, sensations in my back, I think those days, yeah, I could look in the mirror and be like, dude, you got to do something like you, whether it's like shave or something like, cause like I look like I'm wearing it on my face. Mm. And so I think you guys are right. Like if you're not feeling like you're old, then you probably won't wear it on your face and then you won't, you know, uh, develop a frowny face <laughs> and then, you know, you won't develop wrinkles and shit like that. This is one thing I think is pretty interesting. Like, for example, I know my feet are younger because, like, I've never, like, yeah. I, I'm, we're doing, <laughs> both of us, like, people see us fidgeting and shit <clears throat> behind the desk because we're doing stuff with our feet all the time. But I've never been able to toe spread like this before. My feet have never looked this strong before. My feet are definitely younger than they were be, mm-hmm. be, because we're, we're working on this shit. So there, there are so many different things that, you can work on, you can improve at, you can continue to develop that 
Yeah, and, and please moisturize. You know, one thing that one thing that's interesting is like in in my house and in all other all other black houses I know, lotion and moisturizer is a normal thing, mm -hmm. and it's just like that's something that's kept into adulthood. If you're a black person that doesn't use lotion or moisturizer, number one. You'll have ashy elbows and knees and people will roast the fuck out of you. So that's why you don't see that often. Right. But I think that's part of why when some of these men and women get to 50, 60 years old, they say it don't crack. It don't crack because we use moisturizer. <laughs> moisturizer is part of the yeah. culture. I just I just believe that I don't need it. <laughs> So that you're already there. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. And there, I mean, it's probably to help sell more products, but there is little proof that some of the stuff that's in moisturizer is supposed to actually really help. Yeah. I'm sure there's like shit that's dangerous in there just, just mm. as well, just like there is in makeup and whatever else. But. Use some more of the natural stuff then, but moisturize. I'm just going to use special effects. Yeah. And, wait for, <laughs> and wait to just build out a sick avatar. Hey, would you fuck with Botox? There have been a lot of guys. Would you guys Trying fuck with Botox? Botox? Yeah. Andrew yeah. Schultz apparently got some Botox done. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Andrew Schultz got Botox done. So have a lot of other guys. Mm -hmm. um, is that something? What do you guys think about that? I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Yeah. I just would For me, I wouldn't. I think like, uh, I don't know. I think getting a little older is cool. Mm -hmm. I think it's all right. How about you? Yeah, I think, I think dudes age well. Um, like, you know, I forgot what move. Oh, knocked up. She's like, as I get older, I look crappier. I look uglier. As he gets older, he looks more handsome. And, um, you know, like it's funny because like my dad and I, if you look at pictures of us at like similar ages, yeah. we look extremely similar. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, well, that's what you have to look forward to. And she's like, your dad's very handsome. I'm like, all right, cool. Then I don't have to worry about it. I remember at your wedding when I first ever saw your uh, dad's head, I'm like, God damn. That is <laughs> <laughs> that's so shit. funny. <laughs> that's Andrew's head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I ain't tripping. Like even like grays and stuff in my beard, like I'm yeah. looking forward to it. Like I'm not worried about it at all. Hey, but that's, that is one of the... I think Leonardo DiCaprio has apparently been catching some fire because he does the constant 19, like he switches them out at 25, right? Mm. Oh, got it. Always, like, yeah. Switches out his Botox? Switches out his ladies at 25. Yeah. Um, but. That's funny, by it, the way. It, the, the cultural thing of like guys mm. getting better as they're older and having more options as they get older and women, it's tougher. It's just like, that does suck. Mm -hmm. I, I do find it that like, that sucks for ladies. Guys a lot of times aren't that developed, you know, like, like mentally some, yeah. and I mean, not so much physically, but mentally, uh, you know, I think about myself when I was 25, it's like I was nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> I was lucky to meet somebody at that age. Yeah. yeah. The, the Very lucky. The benefits are like, a, um, I, I can't think of the right word, but it's, um, it's front loaded for women <laughs> and, and rightfully so for men to be back loaded. Cause like, right. If we had, I don't know, plenty of options early on, we'd, we'd fuck it up. That's not good. You know, like, we'd, yeah. we'd, yeah, it wouldn't be good. It wouldn't be good. So I think it's uh, uh, nature played out the way it was supposed to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. What do you think? We take this one in for a landing? Uh, do we have anything else? I thought we had another thing. You had something with Andrew Tate? Oh, we got to we gotta spend some. We're going to reel that should, one in for another. We should spend that. Yeah, Andrew Tate being, you know kicked off all platforms. I think that's interesting in and of itself, but mm -hmm. we'll we'll end this here. We want to know what you guys think about the the topics we talked about today mm -hmm. and join the Discord because I will yeah. uh we you know to find the shiitake mushrooms you can cook that mm. are totally natural, non-drugs. Um go to the Discord. And it tastes like pumpkin seeds to I'll me. I'm you, surprised yeah. you guys don't catch that. I don't get the pumpkin. Yeah, you eat way more pumpkin seeds. I don't remember well, the I last mean, time I I've had pumpkin seeds. Me neither, but all right, well, we're gonna get out of here, but and I am sent right now. If um, yeah, you had a lot of you had a lot of shiitake <laughs> yeah, mushrooms. I kind of sense it. Take us on out of here. Andrew. All right, thank you everybody for checking out today's episode. Uh, in the comment section, if you guys know what shiitake mushrooms we're talking about, let me know if you guys think they taste like pumpkin seeds. For a because to me they do. By the time this actually episode comes out, everyone's gonna know what happened with Jason Kalipa. But his first match, he won. Oh shit. 17 to 0. Meaning his opponent did not score a single point they on this do man. Shit. Does that do happen shit. often? It happens if you're good. <laughs> oh shit, okay. <laughs> it happens when you're good. Um, but yeah. Hell yeah. Way to go, shit. Let's go. All righty. Uh, so yeah, drop us some comments down below and uh, make sure you guys hit uh, the like button and subscribe if you guys are not subscribed already. We would sincerely appreciate that. And um, uh, please follow the podcast at MB Power Project on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. My Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter is at I am Andrew Z and Zima. Where are you at? Discord. 
<laughs> Join the Discord, guys. Because the shiitake mushrooms are kicking in. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this mic feels... R- Sing for us. <laughs> let's see, let's see what we can get him see, to that's, do. That's how close I need you to the mic on a regular basis. Just like fucking. Just you right sound here. so clean. Right oh, right Andrew, off. read that. Uh, <laughs> read that post that you sent us earlier. Oh, what's the post? <laughs> About the sloppy. So I gotta, I gotta make sure, like, because I, I, I sounded like it was from Graham Tuttle. I'm, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm new to this subreddit, and I don't want to put them completely on blast. Yeah. But uh, especially during like when I when I had my vasectomy and I couldn't do anything, I would just like fuck around and read shit online, and I stumbled upon this subreddit, and so they have like a anything goes daily chat thing. Okay, I'll probably ask in there if it's cool if I shout them out on air because again I don't know because they talk a lot about illegal stuff, but um, uh, somebody said uh, you guys ever get frustrated with how a chick gives head and <laughs> and think about how you could do such a better job if you were gay. <laughs> <laughs> I could do such a better job. <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, wait, what? what? He goes on to say, like, I'd be competitive about how far down <gasps> my throat I could get that dick. <laughs> <laughs> competitive. <laughs> Gagging and crying and shit. It's a real shame I'm not gay, actually. I'd give the <laughs> I'd give the dirtiest, sloppiest, best blowjob you ever got. No homo, yeah, you bro. gotta have the makeup that runs and everything. You don't want <laughs> yeah. waterproof stuff. Yeah, fuck yeah. That. yeah. Make that make see that run. Get those effects. Yeah. yeah. Yep. 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 Now, nah, real talk, I can give some sloppy talk, Costco. <laughs> <laughs> real talk, I, I'd be good at that shit. Yeah, I don't even think I have a gag reflex. Oh, do okay. No gag reflex. I'm good. <laughs> what a man. But Wait, what? <laughs> I also want to shout out my girl because she gives. I love her, and I'm very content. So thank you, babe. Love you. Can you swap? <laughs> <laughs> it seems like oh, no. just to prove a point. Just to be competitive. This could be competitive up in here. Join the Discord, guys. <laughs> At Insima Inyang. At Insima Inyang on Instagram, YouTube. That was fucking funny, Andrew. At Insima Inyang on TikTok and Twitter. Mark, you guys are gross. I'm at Mark Smelly Bell. Strength is never weakness. Oh, no. Weakness is never strength. Catch you guys later. Bye. <laughs>